got some fat wood. We went hunting yesterday, found ourselves a, a nice big old tree that was, looks like it's been hit by lightning and the, the top half was missing. Must have had a stump around 18-ish, sort of 20-ish in, inches in diameter. And uh, yeah, we thought it looked like a prime candidate. So I took my Katana boy, my silky Katana boy, six, 650 I believe it is. And with the sole purpose of chopping down some um, nice fresh fat wood. The fat wood we had was probably harvested quite a while ago. I haven't been looking after it. We didn't wrap it in plastic or anything like that. So I guess it's dried out a little bit and um, it was losing its smell. So I had to do something about it. Went up, found this specimen of a tree, lopped it down with great difficulty, mind you. The Katana boy, as good as they are, going through the, the very sappy um, pine was sort of difficult, a, a lot more difficult than I thought. There was three of us there, two mates with us, and we all took turns and well, inside that tree there was an angry ant nest, a big wasp nest, and some giant, we don't know, we're thinking it's a big huntsman spider. They're big spiders, but we haven't seen one like this. It was like black and white and evil looking and <laughs> he wasn't real happy. And anyway, we all got bitten by something. I was lucky enough I only got bitten by one ant and the two boys, they got, I think they both got bitten by ants and wasps. So anyway, we destroyed their home. They got a little bit of revenge back on us. But anyway, what we've come up with is some really nice specimens of fat wood. This is only a little bit of it. I've shared it with the boys, you know. So, got some really nice, strong, strong smelling, nicely coloured bacon. Haven't had any that smelt like this for quite a while. So yeah, and we got heaps more of it, you know. We got our own personal little little forest up there that nobody else sort of goes up and messes with. So we've got a pretty much an endless supply. But that was the fat wood front. Next thing, I'm going to have a couple of shout outs. One to good old Aussie Pete Morrissey. A few of the guys on that hang around this sort of scene will know who Aussie Pete is. Uh, he lives on the other side of town to me. He's about 45 minutes away from my house. We've caught up a few times, gone um, prospecting together. He's a top bloke. And um, yeah, and I'm sure some of the guys would uh, appreciate us giving him a shout out. He deserves it. And uh, yeah, good on you, Pete. We'll catch up again shortly. Um, the second shout out is going to Chuck and Steel. He subscribed and commented on one of my videos, maybe from last night it was. So I subscribed back to him, jumped on his channel. Man, this guy is a um, dead set legend with a slingshot. Most of his videos are slingshot and knife orientated which totally suits this circle and um, he did a bit of a an overview on the tops um, uh, one of the tops bushcraft knives um, Brackenmo and I've talked to Donovan too and Seabop and I haven't bought many knives this year. I bought one charade last week. That was my first knife buy this year, apart from this bayonet. Uh, but 
but I don't have a dedicated bushcraft knife. You know, I've, I've got heaps of knives and I just use them, but I didn't have a, a particular um, dedicated one. So I, I narrowed, I thought that I was going to make a list and take about a week or two to decide, but I found a place in Western Australia, Survival Supplies Australia. I'll give them a, a little shout out as well, I suppose. Bought a few things off them. They've got some really good prices on um, knives and lots of different sort of survival-y, prepper, bushcraft -y sort of outdoor stuff. So give them a look. I contacted him, chucked him an email earlier. He got back to me and he's happy to lay by one of these knives for us. I don't have enough to just, because we're paying at least double what you guys pay over in the States. So uh, don't really have 300 ish odd dollars to just drop on a knife. So old mate over there at um, Survival Supplies, he's good enough to lay by it for us so I can pay it off. Told him, you know, three to four weeks should be fine. And um, so it looks like that's what I'm getting, one of those um, Brackenmo's. We'll see how that goes. I'm sure it's gonna be awesome, made in America. Um, I've just been watching videos about it all night. Seems like a really good knife. About the only thing people sort of whinge about is the the belt clip on the Kydex sheath and some people don't like the slab sided handles, but I don't really have a problem with them. I'm used to having and carrying small thin uh, handled knives. So my hands aren't too massive, so We'll see how it goes, but that's what's going to be coming. Blade wise, is the 1889 Schmidt Rubin bayonet. This cost a fair penny too. The missus might watch this, <laughs> so I'm not going to even go there. But it was expensive. It's um. Marked Newhausen Sig. Uh, that goes along with the 1889 Schmidt Rubin antique that I've got. And uh, that's also immaculate. This thing here's got a bit of lanolin on it. So it's just got some greasy sort of stains on it, but. It's a fitting knife, but I knew that, you know, there wouldn't have been many opportunities to grab a, a knife made in the 18, probably early 1890s, 1891, maybe, 92. So I thought I'll get the bayonet to match the, the rifle and then um, I've got the set. Um, what else? Cold steel. Uh, Trailhawk, I believe that this one is. Is it the Trailhawk? I think it is. This thing here just never ceases to amaze. This is by far my favourite of the Cold Steel Tomahawks. I've got three of them. I've got the Frontier Hawk, the Rifleman Hawk, which you've seen these two go head to head in another video. And this one here punches way above its weight. It does what everything else does. It weighs a fraction of what everything else, like even even the Rifleman Hawk is light compared to an axe or even a small camp axe. And this is like half the weight of this again. You know, you tap the bottom of the handle, the head comes off. I made a little mask for the blade that's just made out of heated up PVC, PVC water pipe, and it's just got some pop rivets around around there. And you know, that costs nothing to make, you know. Literally, most guys would have that stuff in their shed, you know. So it's actually quite easy. Just And the good thing about it is you can heat it up with a heat gun or hot water or whatever, put it in a 
little toaster oven, something like that. And uh, if you get it wrong, you can chuck it back in and it will just keep remolding. So, um, yeah. But the performance on this, even my mates that were chopping the um, pine tree up with us yesterday, one of the guys, he's, he's been around me probably nearly every time I've used this and I, we've tested it against his his axes as well as my other tomahawks and man, it, it just works so well. I highly rate these, especially with how you can um, take the head off, put the head in like a separate little pouch on the outside of my bag or something like that. The handle just goes up the inside of, of my bag. Then that way there's no rubbing you know, on, on other equipment. So, um, yeah, great Australian dollars. I think this is around 40, 45 bucks, probably cheap as over in the States. Awesome little bit of kit. And it, it does the job that a big, a bigger one, a bigger ax or a bigger tomahawk will do. You just might have to do a couple, you know, a little, a few more hits. But um, absolutely loving it. Right. Um, yeah, shout out to Pete, Chuck and Steel, Australian Survival Supplies, and um, that's it. Just a short one today. Everyone, take care, be good, and have good health. See you soon.